Commentator Keith Boykin. And Keith, uh, listen, uh, we should be mindful that there is a, um, a long delay here, so let's be mindful of that. But I understand that you were arrested in New York today while taking pictures of protests. What happened? Well, Don, I was uh, on 125th Street in Harlem watching the protesters for the Black Lives Matter protest going down the street. It was mostly, almost entirely peaceful. Um, the police were actually very helpful. Uh, they weren't causing any problems until it got to the West Side Highway. The protesters moved on to the West Side Highway. They proceeded down from 125th Street to almost 96th Street. I was in front of the protesters with my with my camera so I could video and, and uh, take photos. And the police came from the other direction, from 94th Street. They came from that direction, and they, they said they were going to arrest people. I said, I'm with the press. They walked by me, and they turned around, and they arrested me anyway. I, I, I asked, why am I being arrested? And they said, well, you're blocking the highway. Now, mind you, I wasn't blocking the highway because the police and the protesters were blocking the highway. I was in between the two of them. I was simply photographing what was taking place and documenting what was happening so I could post it online. Um, they took me. They put me in a zip tie. They put my hands behind my back, put me in a, in a, in a hot car for a hot van for an hour. And put me in a hot police bus for an hour. Uh, then they took me down to one police plaza where they held me in a, in a jail cell with about 35 other uh, prisoners from today's protest. And uh, we were there for, I was there for four hours in the jail cell, six hours overall in total custody. And they never charged me with any, any felony. It was only a, a simple misdemeanor. Not even, a, not even that, it was just a summons. It was just a summons to appear in court in, in September uh, for, for blocking the highway. And a six-hour deal. The police should have, should, when they could have just said, you need to move off the highway or you're going to be arrested. They didn't bother to do that. They just arrested me. The police have too much power. And, and I saw what Bill de Blasio said earlier today about the police ramming the barricades. I saw a similar incident to that take place on 125th Street. I posted it. The video is on my Twitter feed, uh, Keith Boykin. And you can see there, the police are surrounded in this situation, not half surrounded, but they're literally surrounded by protesters in 125th Street. There's a police van. And what did they do? They, they de-escalated the situation. They got out of the vehicle. They, 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 they pulled back the vehicle instead of moving forward. And they allowed the protesters to get to, to move by. And then the, the, vehicle, the police vehicles could escape. That was all they had to do to de-escalate the situation. That's what police are supposed to do. But so often the police actually don't de-escalate. They make matters worse. And that's what people are protesting about. That's why they're so upset about George Floyd right now. I, it, 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 it saddens me. This has been a horrible week for everybody in America. With 100,000 dead from the coronavirus, Memorial Day was this week. I was in Houston uh, for my for my. Uh, my stepdad's uh, uh, celebration of his life because he passed away during the coronavirus. And I was there at the cemetery, at the, at the Veterans National Cemetery in Houston. And then the same day George Floyd died, was murdered. And then after that, the 100,000 dead. And then the, the protests throughout the country. And then yesterday I found out that one of my mentors, Ron Simmons, from Washington, D.C., passed away. So I was just having a horrible week. I get back to New York because I've been in Houston for three months. I get back to New York, and I'm thinking I go out and watch what's happening with the protest to watch democracy in, a in action. And instead, I get arrested by the police for simply doing doing nothing or exercising my First Amendment right to, to be Is a citizen, what? to be a journalist, to be on the street. Were you, were you uh, away social distancing? Is that why you were away from New York? I was. Uh, my, my stepfather passed away uh, on March 10th. So, and so I was there uh, okay, so for a while. Um, I, I'm, sor I'm sorry to hear that. So when you got back, which, uh, was, there was no social distancing when you were in the back of the van or the police car or when they put you in the cell, I would imagine. Not, well, none whatsoever. I had on my mask, uh, but then they pulled it down so they could take a photo of me. So for the duration of time that I was in police custody in the, in the prison bus and in the, uh, the, the, the van, the mask was below my chin. Uh, so there was no social distancing during that time. When I was in the cell, I was able to, to pull my mask up. But there were 35 other inmates, 34 other inmates in the, in the cell at that time. Only half of them had masks. And... Um, there's no opportunity for social distancing when you're in a cell with 35 people. It's just impossible to do. Were they, uh, so there's, in the police, I see there. 
Were they, did, did other, when, did you talk to other people who were there? Did, did other people say that they were uh, detained or arrested or whatever or given a summons to, for doing the same thing that you did for blocking traffic or? Exactly. In fact, uh, one of the people who was arrested with me was a young man who I posted his story on my Twitter feed as well. Um, I don't know. I don't know what his age is, but I guess he's in his twenties or thirties or something. And uh, the young man who's walking down the street, African American from Harlem, he was protesting. He told me about his life story. He, he said he was an essential worker. He told me that he had to be there, that he was there because he was he was frustrated as a black man that his life was not valued. That's why people are out there. You know, I know there are some people who were engaged in violent behavior, but the people who I saw today were peacefully protesting, and they were of all different races and colors and genders and sexual orientations predominantly black, predominantly young, in Harlem, then marching down through the West Side Highway. Uh, and these are people who are frustrated, Don. They're frustrated with the way the, the society has mistreated them. They're frustrated with the conditions of our country. You think about everything that's gone on from the coronavirus to the, to the, shut, to the shutdown and quarantine to the, the, the death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. To the, to just, to, it's just a catastrophe. And there is no leadership. There's no leadership at, 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 at the federal level especially, but there's no leadership to bring us together at this moment. So Lincoln talked about the better angels of our nature. Who is the one who is in our country right now who is pulling the people together, pulling us together and making us a union? It almost feels like, I've been saying this for a long time, we've been in a cold civil war for quite some time. Well, today and this week, it feels like it really just got hot. This cold civil war has wow. become a burning civil war. And I, I'm sad to say that there yeah. is, it feels like this time the president is not on the side of the union. All right. Well, Keith Boykin, we're glad that you're safe. We appreciate you coming on. Um, take care of yourself uh, and stay safe out there. Thanks.